Okay, so we're in Bhutan and our guide is actually going to show us right now how to do some archery. This is the national sport. Apparently, they've been, he's been practicing archery for a long time. How long have you been doing archery? Uh, uh, since from uh, eight years. Eight years. And you you can hit the bullseye a lot of the time? Yes. The dirt? Yes? yes? Do you think if I put my hand on the board, you could hit my, you could get it between my fingers? Yes. No oh way. My God. No way. <laughs> okay, You're crazy. Gonna <laughs> Don't do it. Alex, I, I, tr it. I trust him. I trust him. We're going to do this. Okay. Don't do it. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> okay. Shit. This is why we have insurance. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> wow. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Crazy! <laughs> okay, so after Cambodia, we flew into Bangkok. Bangkok, we've been using as a bit of a hub to jump around to different places on this trip through Asia. And then uh, we had just one night there before we took off in the morning to Bhutan. Kuzu Zambola! Welcome to Bhutan. That's uh, hello in Bhutanese. We landed and right away we got picked up by our tour agency, which was in the Bhutan Mountain Holiday. I really strongly suggest going with these guys. They've been wonderful the whole time we've been here so far. Incredibly accommodating. Kuzu Zambola, welcome to Bhutan. I'm Sona Mishé and we are here at the Paro and we are going to visit the Paro uh, fortress. The first day that we were there, we ended up going to this massive fortress. The fortress was told to me to have been built as some sort of protection in case of an attack, but while I was there, it really came across to me as if it was more of a religious place. A lot of monks were there, there was definitely uh, religious artifacts, and uh, it, just the layout and the architecture was really beautiful. But that was the first of three fortresses that we've been to, and they're really cool to check out. The thing about Bhutan is it's probably the best dressed country I've ever seen in my life. Uh, another thing about Bhutan is it's the world's happiest place. Instead of gross domestic product, or GDP, they measure by gross domestic happiness, or GDH. Uh, so you can kind of feel the vibes right away that people are really happy and content here. Then after that we headed to the Iron Bridge. Now this is a bridge that's been built in the 15th century and it's very basic. It's uh, actually iron cables and since then they've put up some fencing to, to support people walking through. Uh, but it's very basic and um, has been built by a monk um, in the 15th century. And something very interesting is when you uh, cross the Iron Bridge they have three pegs. And if anyone tries to ever cross the bridge, an enemy, they can hammer the pegs and the bridge will fall. So how sweet are the people here? Because that bridge is made out of net and the animals can't walk across it, they built a separate bridge for animals to walk across. I think that's pretty freaking sweet. We headed down to the National Memorial Stupa, which is this beautiful, iconic structure. And the thing about it is you have all of these people walking around and clockwise around it. And apparently some people do it all day long. Some people do it between their lunch breaks, others wake up in the morning, walk there all day long, go to bed. And you have to do it in clockwise formation. It's very important to, to go in clockwise. Um, it, it represents good health and, and fortune. So after that we checked out the big Buddha statue. It's the tallest Buddha statue in the world. 51 meters, 169 feet of Buddha awesomeness. Again, it, it's, just, it's just overpowering how big these statues are. And, and we've seen tens of thousands of Buddha statues at this point. And this one is, is definitely the biggest. Uh, from my understanding, the reason they build Buddha statues so large is many people can pray in front of it at once. So the national animal in Bhutan is called a takin, which is essentially a cross between a cow or a bull and a goat. It's a really interesting animal to look at because it's incredibly stocky and it has this head of a goat. But from a distance, when you're watching it walk, it looks like a bear or something. They're pretty impressive animals. Definitely very, very strong and it's nothing like I've ever seen. Following that, we went to my favorite place, the Monastery of Fertility. And there seems to be a lot of uh, significant artwork here on the walls, a lot of graffiti. A lot of penises everywhere. 
I think that's a really great symbolization for fertility. As you walk through these beautiful, beautiful rice fields, and when you get to this monastery, there's just penis structures everywhere. There's paintings on the walls, every shape, every form. Um, the word penis in Bhutanese is po, so um, po is, 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 was definitely the theme. The guy that created this, uh, he was considered a bit of a madman, but the, the way the legend goes is that he traveled to this particular part of the land and, and he was chasing a demon, and the demon turned into a dog, and then he caught the dog, and I guess he killed it, and then he buried it right here. And that was in the 15th century. And so the name of the church, I can't pronounce it properly, but essentially the translation into English means that no dog monastery, although there is a dog right there. But this whole monastery is a place where people who seem to have a hard time having a child, they'll actually travel from around the world to this spot. And because in theory, it could actually help you become fertile and help you have a child, which is super cool. So if you have a hard time having a kid, come to Bhutan. You gotta come to this spot. No dog temple. <laughs> Finally, we ended up at Punaka Zong, which is considered the most beautiful fortress in all of Bhutan. Um, it, it's, it's right along the, the riverbed, and again, a, a massive, massive structure. Whenever they bring in a new king, a new, a new royalty, his coronation actually takes place here. So all five of the kings since the early, early 1900s have had their coronation at this particular location. And once again, the the architecture and everything is really, really beautiful. So that'll be part of the tour, I guarantee, if you go into Bhutan, and it's really cool to check out. And then the next day we headed to the Tiger's Nest, which is where we are right now. And we've been hiking for about an hour, and um, it's very high altitude. It's really hard to breathe up here, but we'll just keep plugging along. So we're about 20 minutes hiking up to this epic monastery called the Tiger's Nest. And uh, it's very important for Mahayana Buddhism. And uh, we got about a two hour hike total and super high altitude, so it's hard to breathe, but that's just good, good exercise. got its name because apparently some guy flew a tiger here and uh, I don't know the rest of the story but I know it goes something along the lines of him flying a tiger from one spot to another spot and that they landed here but they definitely have celebrated the flight of this tiger pretty fantastically because they built this thing on the side of this massive cliff face next to this epic waterfall the whole thing is epic it's totally epic so bring your good camera gear or buy new camera gear because you're not going to do it justice with your phone um, something about Bhutan, a big mis miscommunication is that uh, people think it's, they charge us $250 a day to be uh, entering the country, but what people don't really know is that uh, they charge $250 a day which is all inclusive and that includes transport, food, a tour guide, um, as well as tourism activities and places to go and see, as well as beautiful, beautiful luxurious hotels, everything's all inclusive which actually makes Bhutan uh, an affordable place, even for uh, you know, youth backpackers and, um, and youth travelers. After this, we're gonna go and do some archery, then we're staying at a homestay this evening, and then tomorrow we fly back into Thailand and we're gonna go and rip it up on the beaches, but right now we're having a pretty cultural experience in, uh, in Bhutan. <laughs> I know you come searching for the gauntlet of truth. <laughs> but in order to receive the gauntlet, you must answer three truths. First, the riddle of the warlock. You must answer second, the truth of the dragon's den. 
You must answer third, the dance of the Nazareth. And then you must face your own shadow and reflection in the pond of misfortune. Guzu <laughs> Zembola! Nothing. 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 Nothing.